What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 222 and we start today's episode off with Deja Vu, Vargas has come to us and said that he's feeling a little bit homesick so Vargas now seems to want to leave the club as well. Where's he going to go? I don't know, Germany? It's ridiculous, isn't it? First, Sanchez, the Chilean, was homesick and he wanted to leave because he didn't understand what's going on here in his country despite obviously living in it for years and years and years in game. As for Vargas, it's the same thing. I'd imagine that as soon as he left QPR, he went to Arsenal and now he's homesick and wants to leave the country. He doesn't understand the culture and so on and so forth. So now Vargas wants to leave. I, I, I have no idea where Vargas is going to end up. But um, yeah, Vargas... As I mentioned with Vargas before, like he's, I've said like, I don't know, like 20 times now, he's been playing for his future here at Arsenal. But to be honest, I do actually like the guy, despite being 31 years old and for us wanting to transition to a younger squad. He always scores when I put him in the side, so I, I wouldn't mind keeping Vargas here, but if he wants to leave, I guess his fate's sealed, really. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, still, we take on Spurs for the first game of today's episode in a North London derby here. And of course, we come on the back of the very disappointing loss to PSG away in Partners Prance uh, in the Champions League semi final first leg and coming into this game against Spurs I would make 10 changes the first chance fell to Spurs then I thought they should have had a penalty there and in the 40th minute they did finally take the leaders David Silva finds Christian Eriksen and Eriksen smashes the ball past Chesney and makes it 1-0 to Spurs so Spurs do take the lead here at White Hart Lane and it was coming it was coming Christian Eriksen was giving me problems all throughout the first half and he was the guy that got the goal for Spurs just a simple pass inside and Eriksen smashed it past Chesney who again I just I don't know like could he have saved this one is it just me I mean, it's pretty much straight at him, and it seems to go through his gloves. In my opinion, if you're an 85-rated goalkeeper, very solid indeed. You've got to get something on that. At least that's my opinion. Still, he doesn't, and it Spurs won Arsenal nil. And the goal was coming. I felt as though they should have had a penalty. Spurs obviously wanting a revenge. The last time we faced them, we smashed them four goals to one in the Capital One Cup semi-final here at White Hart Lane. So they would, of course, want revenge. And after that goal, they looked as though they were going to be on their way to getting it. Until the 64th minute, we did hit back here because Zola finding, guess who? Eduardo Vargas, who Ronaldo chopped around Ben Davies and smashes the ball past the goalkeeper to make it Spurs 1 Arsenal 1 so Vargas gets the goal he says he's homesick he says he wants to leave the Emirates and go somewhere else and you know he keeps on scoring so I don't know what to say to the guy you know I really don't if he wants to leave and a, a bid comes in for him in the summer transfer window then I'll sell him but if no one else comes in for him as still no bids have come in for Vargas yet he's going to be staying here whether he likes it or not but he keeps scoring goals so I don't mind Spurs 1 Arsenal 1 Vargas with a goal and in the 77th minute a great chance for us to win it here and again it was Vargas with the attempt but it's a good stop by the goalkeeper as he turns it behind for a corner and from the resulting corner the final chance of the game Santi Gazzola swings the ball in looking for the silver floro not the best of corner routines and a header goes into the stands and behind for a goal kick so final score Spurs 1 Arsenal 1 it's a draw uh, that is now two games without a win a little bit a little bit frustrating in that game I didn't really do anything in the first half in the second half I came alive a little bit but there still wasn't much urgency it is worth noting there were a lot of changes made from the PSG game in midweek but even so you know we still still got a points gap in the league. We are still top of the table with a few games to go. I still, touch wood, think we'll be okay and we are going to be underwhelming favourites. Underwhelming? Overwhelming favourites to win the Premier League. But um, still, disappointing not to um, to have won that game. So I think we probably could have done late on in the second half. Still following that, Joel Campbell then comes to us and says he's concerned. He's not getting much play time. He, he's worried about the media speculation about him. And it just seems like quite a few players this season have been a little bit discontent with what's been going on. And it's, it's one of those things where I don't really pay too much attention to it. But I swear it's been happening this season more than most where players are unhappy about game time and wanting to leave the club and feeling homesick. I mean, it does happen every now and then, but I swear this season has been happening like double the amount of times. But uh, still, we take on PSG for the second game of today's episode here, the second and final game of today's episode as our former club, the French team, come and takes on the Emirates Stadium for the Champions League semi-final second leg. So Sanchez returns to the Emirates Stadium. What kind of reception was he going to get? Well, it was certainly going to be a fight a feisty game and a lively game because of course coming into this game we trail on aggregate by three goals to two and we do need to at least score one goal and the first chance did fall to us and Bayern Yang misses a brilliant chance to score against one of his former clubs he got played through by Rodrigo Lazari and the French forward is usually so reliable but he couldn't hit the target there and it was still goalless and from the goal kick PSG pass out for in the back Kurzawa finds Paul Pogba who was one of the goal scorers in the first leg he picks out Christian Tahiri he finds Lacazette Lacazette finds Alexis Sanchez Sanchez to Lacazette 
Lacazette. Lacazette plays a great free ball towards Eden Hazard. He scored both, uh, well, two of the three goals that PSG scored in the first leg. Holds it up, finds Lacazette, and Chris Ince has to make a brilliant save to deny the former West Bromwich Albion man. So still 0-0 in this game. In the 30th minute, though, PSG played a corner short, and I never really like short corners, and this is why whenever you lose the ball, you can get caught out on the break. As we play it through towards Mbaye Niang, he goes down the left-hand side here, takes on Laporte, the centre-back, drags him out of position, cuts inside, keeps on going, drills in across to the far post, but Lazari's header is tame and straight at Lloris. So still 0-0, we miss, a gr miss up a great chance there on the counter-attack. And in the 41st minute, PSG come forward here with Alexis Sanchez. He finds Marco Verratti. Verratti holds the ball up and finds Lacazette. Lacazette shoots from range, and it goes just wide of the post. So PSG, even though they were leading on aggregate, were still going to be going out there trying to score more goals here at the Emirates Stadium. And in the 58th minute, Ryan Saar plays the ball forward towards Luke Garbutt. We were still in need of a goal. Garbutt's pass is cut out by David Luiz, but it falls to Niang, and Niang's strike is saved by Lloris. So it was still goalless in this game, and we just couldn't seem to get ourselves the goal we needed. But as Joel Campbell crossfields the ball towards Kevin Savanier here, the former PSG man, goes down the left-hand side, takes it round his man and finds Luke Garbutt. Garbutt inside towards Niang, plays it back towards Aaron Ramsey, great ball out wide towards Joel Campbell. Campbell flicks it on, and Rodrigo Lazari volleys it past Lloris and makes it Arsenal 1, PSG 0, as Campbell, who got the assist, rugby tackles him down, and we are in front in this game, and it's exactly what we needed, because of course a goalless draw wouldn't be enough for us, we needed a goal, it's a really nice ball over the top by Ramsey, Campbell flicks it down, and what a finish by Lazari, on his weaker right foot, first time volley, pass Lloris, and it's Arsenal 1 at PSG 0. So in a game where we needed to score, as things stood, it was looking like it would be a stalemate in the end, but Rodrigo Lazari comes up with the goods, and the little Italian does fire us into the lead, so as things stand, even though it's 3-3 on aggregate, we would be going through on the away goal ruling, as I mentioned, that is why away goals are so important in European ties. As things stand, we are going through to the final. So Arsenal and PSG, still a long way to go though, just under half an hour worth of football still to play. And in front of kickoff, Ashton Gutz finds Eden Hazard. He sprints down the right-hand side and takes it around Luke Garber. Quick little back heel to Ashton Gutz. Gutz plays it back to Hazard. The Belgian crosses the ball in and Gonzalo Higuain off the bench almost scores, but his header hits the top of the bar and goes behind for a goal kick. So still 1-0. And after the goal, it was literally all backs to the wall. PSG were coming at us left, right and centre. We were defending for our lives here. They kept on coming forward. Great chance here for Alexis Sanchez, whose shot goes just wide of the post. God, imagine if he would have scored the goal that would put PSG through to the final here at the Emirates. Still 1-0 though. And from this corner in the 80th minute, it was still 1-0 to Arsenal. We were defending for the life of us. Only one player was forward from this corner. The ball comes into Sanchez here. Sanchez finds Gutz. Gutz finds Kurzweil. We're defending, we're defending, we're defending. Higuain turns his man, finds Remy Cabela. And with nine minutes to go, Remy Cabela scores in front of the travelling fans and makes it Arsenal 1, PSG 1. And that means on aggregate, it's Arsenal 3, PSG 4. So the French side right now, as things stand, are going through in a really topsy-turvy Champions League semi-final tie. It's Cabela with the goal. Obviously, La Cabela was such a dangerous partnership when we were at PSG and Cabela makes it 1-1 here. From kickoff, Lazari goes from goal from range, but it goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick. And it was how the game would finish as well. So that means as Lloris celebrates and Cabela can celebrate as well, he is the hero because PSG are going through to the Champions League final and we have been knocked out in the semi-finals and that is just devastating. We are out and we will not be going to a Champions League final in our first full season. So devastated about that. It will be a PSG Bayern Munich final and you know to be honest like we, we could have we could have done it but PSG were just a little bit too strong for us I felt and I guess if nothing else it's proof that the job isn't done here yet. You know I still get commentary now and then from people saying oh, I should leave Arsenal go somewhere else in your possible final season but the job isn't done here yet you know we still got work to do in the first team we still need to get some better players in this Arsenal team is still not capable of winning the Champions League yet and it was shown you know we, we lose to PSG in the semi-finals 4-3 on aggregate and you know it's it, it's frustrating it's, uh, it's highly irritating. On another day, we could have won both of the ties, not just uh, the, the second leg. But we, we just weren't good enough. And it's as simple as that. PSG go through. Our old club dump us out. And that is going to be no European trophy for us of Arsenal this season, which is a bit of a shame. We'll be coming back next year. We'll be coming back strong next year. You know, it's a shame not to get to the final, but we'll definitely be coming back strong next year. And hopefully have one or two good signings in the summer transfer window as well. We've got two good players coming in on pre-contract. We'll be able to put up a better fight next year as well. But um, I'm, I'm secretly hoping PSG do actually 
actually win the final as well, just to show that we'll be, we were beaten by the, uh, the winners overall, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, still, to end the episode off, we have a squad report here, so you can see how the players are currently doing. As you're looking at the squad, I just said there, there's still work to do with this Arsenal team, and clearly that is the case. There are still some players here that need to be sold on, and also some improvements we need to make to the first team as well. And also, to end the episode off, we have a final look at the league table as well. As you can see, only a few games to go in the Barclays, uh, Barclays? In the Barclays Premier League season, and as you can see, we are still top of the table. Manchester City in second place. We have a two-point gap over them with five games to go, but importantly enough, we do have a game in hand, which could prove to be crucial. But that is going to end the episode, guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, then please do leave a like, and I will see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.